Greg. Yes. Take me to Habakkuk. Uh, chapter 1. Um, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Oh, I got a feeling uh, that, that everything going to be uh, all right. Amen. In Habakkuk 1 and 5, one of our favorite verses of Scripture. And I'll let Greg read that, and then I'm going to talk a little bit, and, and we're going we to uh, go have a birthday party. Habakkuk 1 and 5, and then I won't. I tell you, read Jeremiah first. We come to Rebecca in a minute. Jeremiah 29, 11. Rebecca 1 and 5 simply says, Behold, you among the heathen I regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work in, I work in your day. Uh, uh, though you were told, you would not believe it. So I'm going to go to a verse of Scripture that God is telling us, and we won't believe it. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and verse 8. 11 says, For I know the thoughts that God, I think toward you, God, saith I, the Lord. I, I know how I'm thinking. See, where you are right now and what you're going through right now is not God's ultimate plan for you. So God tells Jeremiah to tell Israel, I know how I am thinking about you. Jeremiah had the, the unique job, I'd like to say of restoring hope to a people that have lost their hope. Um, you can go through so much till it robs us of our faith. I come to church, I hear the word, but nothing seems to change. My conditions not only don't seem to change, uh, my conditions seem to get worse so Jeremiah's job was to restore to Israel hope to restore to them that those things that God has promised us will happen one writer said that the promises of God all of the promises of God in him they're yes and in him they are amen so every promise God makes has to happen because he's God. Uh, Numbers 23, 19 says that God is not a man, uh, that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. But if God said it, it has to happen. If God speaks a thing, it has to come to pass. The Hebrew writer talking about the immutable word of God, as in Hebrews 6, he said that by two immutable things. And, and what blows my mind when you read those verses, God going to be both of the immutables. Yes, sir. And when God made promise uh, to Abraham, he looked around for somebody to swear by. Yes, sir. And he couldn't find anybody that was going to be around as long as himself. Yeah. When you swear, you're supposed to swear by something greater. Yeah. God can find nothing greater to swear by. Yeah. So what he did, he swore by himself. Yeah. So God became both of the immutables. Yes. One immutable was God. Yeah. The other immutable was his word. Yeah. So God and the word made an oath. Yeah. And then the writer said by two uh, immutable things, it is simply impossible possible for God to lie. Immutable means it cannot be altered. It cannot be changed. So if God make you and I a promise, it has to happen. Conditions can make it appear that God cannot do what he promised us. 
one writer called us finite and called God infinite. Now, the difference in finite and infinite, a finite person can make you a promise. A finite person can mean the promise that they make you. But a finite person is not in control of everything. So a finite person can say, man, if you loan me $5, I'll give it back to you tomorrow. But they didn't have control over the circumstances between now and tomorrow. And tomorrow they didn't have the money, so they looked like they told a lie. Yeah. It wasn't a lie, it was the truth when they told you, but they're finite. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to make a point. But when you become infinite, nothing can stop you. Conditions can't stop an infinite God. If God say he's going to bless you, I don't care if the economy is bottomed out, you're still going to be blessed. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Economy can't stop what an infinite God says. If God say I'm going to bless you in poverty, God going to bless you in poverty. If God say I'm going to heal you and the doctor say you're on your way home, God going to heal you. Yeah. So, Israel having bad stuff happen. Their land is war torn. Nebuchadnezzar is carrying Israel off captive down to a land called uh, whatever it is, Babylon. Isn't that somewhere? And here's a people that's losing everything yeah. and here's a preacher saying God says it's going to be alright yeah. one writer said that Jeremiah to prove he believed in what he was saying he went and bought some property yeah. and then they felt that Jeremiah was crazy to go buy property when Nebuchadnezzar is hauling us off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he was showing his belief and trust in what God told him. Yes, sir. Yeah. See, when we come back in these 70 years, I'm going to own uh, this piece of, of land. So uh, God told him to tell the people, this ain't what I got planned for you. So he says, for I know the thoughts yes. that I think toward you, yes. saith the Lord, uh -huh. thoughts of peace, and not of evil. God thinking peaceful about you and your stuff is raggedy. Yeah. God's plan for you is peace and you just got fired. God's plan for you is peace and you just got a full closure notice. His plan for you is peace and some doctor gave you six months to live. God tell Jeremiah tell him that ain't my plan see everything that's happened to you and I is temporal or temporary yes, sir. this is a temporal circumstance yeah. that's bringing you to your permanent place yeah. or your permanent uh, position in God to me 2 Corinthians 4, 18, and y'all forgive me because I'm trying to figure out how to shortenize it, but I'm having trouble. So if y'all act like y'all interested, I might can shortenize it Amen. a little bit. Amen. Yes, sir. While we look not at the things which are seen, yeah, but at the things which are not seen. See, if I can get your eyes off of your trouble. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. For the things which are seen are temporal. See, your trouble is temporary. Yeah. But the things which are not seen are eternal. But what you cannot see is eternal. Yeah. What God spoke is eternal. Yeah. What you're going through is temporary. Yeah. Hebrews 12. To looking unto Jesus. Now, if you get your eyes off the temporary and get your eyes on the eternal, get, get your eyes 
mm. oh, I'm finna mess up, huh? Uh, but get your eyes on the eternal. Get your eyes on Jesus. And your eyes can't be on Jesus unless your eyes are on his word. That's why Isaiah said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on the word, on whose mind is stayed on thee. You have peace in your trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Looking under Jesus. The author. Uh, you better go and give me verse one. Oh. Wherefore, seeing yeah. we are also compassed about yeah. with so great a cloud of witnesses. When, when I read cloud of witnesses, I got to go back to Hebrews 11. And Hebrews 11 is called the faith chapter. <laughs> and the word faith is mentioned in any other chapter in the Bible. <laughs> and it's called the heroes and the sheroes of faith. And the Hebrew writer in 12 started out by saying, we're surrounded by those who've gone on before us. <laughs> we're surrounded by those who have gotten a victory already. <laughs> and there are people in the grandstand of heaven pulling for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah is somewhere up there saying, Hold on, Jones. It's going to come to pass. I heard David say, hang around there. It's going to happen. I heard Jacob say, hold on. As soon as he spoke it, it has to happen. And Abraham, the father of our faith, said, I heard it. I believe it. And God did it. Somebody put those hands together and say, neighbor, get your eyes off your trouble get your eyes on Jesus hallelujah read the rest of that cause I got a word for you let hallelujah us, read the rest of one, twelve, one. let us lay aside yes. every weight yes. and the sin all the doubt, so all the sin up. anything that's causing you not to believe God's word set it aside come on and let us run with patience now, let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. Find your name and give him a high five. I said, neighbor, the Lord told me to tell you, stay in the race. Stay in the race. Yesterday in trouble, you think about throwing the towel in. You got some bad news. You think about quitting. But the Lord told me to tell you this morning, stay in the race. You can't see your way, but stay in the race. It just don't make sense to the natural eye, but stay in the race. I heard some negative talking from your friends, but stay in the race. Get that neighbor hop. I say, stay. It ain't time to quit. It's time to buckle your seatbelt when you're riding in an airplane the pilot comes over the PA system he said there's some turbulence ahead buckle your seatbelt if you've never flown before when you hit the turbulence you'll be scared that something gonna happen but after you've flown a few times when you hit the turbulence you keep on playing your video game you keep on doing what you were doing because you know it's just a rough season a rough patch of air get that neighbor high five I said buckle your seatbelt I said to her just buckle your seatbelt we got some turbulence ahead but stay 